What would you say out of curiosity for uh, people selling or buying a business? Like, what are some of like the rule of thumbs that you believe is in people's best interest in terms of, uh, you know, let's say reviewing the company financials? You had mentioned that you didn't have every box checked, but with your legal background and specific documentation in place. Uh, and, and, you know, obviously this is, although you are a lawyer, none of this is financial tax, legal advice, all that lingo. Not financial advice. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, like, and, and it's risk, right? Whether you're making an investment, doing anything, like it, there's always going to be risk involved that people have to understand. But what would you say are like the biggest things that you've learned that you've helped clients learn or issues to avoid or maybe issues that you had that you wish you would have avoided? I'm curious. So general advice when it comes to buying a business, and this is applicable to any any type of business, not just a restaurant or a franchise. Uh, the number one thing is to pro forma out the uh, the financials for, you know, at least month by month for 12 months and then year by year for four more years. I'm like, and what I mean by that is just, okay, what's, what's the snapshot of the income statement right now? What, what are all your line item, you know, income? Where does your body come from? What are your line item expenses? Okay. Is there anything I see that I can clean up right away? You know, the restaurant industry, you look at prime costs, food and labor costs, and you can just tell right away, like if percentages, you know, if food and labor are higher than 60%, then that's, that's not good. Some people think that number is 55. That's a debatable number in the restaurant world. Some people will go, 60, it's 55 is the magic number. You're, you're giving away five points to 60. It's hard. <laughs> okay. Labor costs and food costs fluctuate wildly. That's the challenge of restaurants. But, um, but, but yeah, making sure you understand the financials. And then when you're going to buy the thing, uh, if possible, get the seller to do some seller financing and not even, even if the seller goes, no, I'm not doing seller financing. Uh, try to figure out how to make them do something. Because make them stick around. Whether whether you want to call, let's say it's a million dollar deal, and what and 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 uh, you want this seller to stick around and make sure that you actually get going. Okay, they have skin in the game. I would always have a consulting agreement for at least six months to a year after the transaction, and then withhold some of the pay so that if they don't fully hand everything off to you. You can at least ding them. They, like people do what they're incentivized to do precisely. Sometimes there's altruism, sure, but 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 people generally do what they're incentivized to do. Um, so so that, so I would say that, and then uh, you know just to analyze like you know, what are the processes and the systems? Are you buying a job or are you buying you know a a, uh, a business? And and another corollary to that is since I see this in the campground world all the time. Uh, is there a line item for you to come in and make money without having to work 40 hours a week on the payroll? Like for us, when we, when we, like I, I made four offers on campgrounds last year. Okay. And so, so I have separately, I, we have uh, one campground that I own with some investors and uh, my business partner, Jerry DePizzo. Shout out to Jerry. He's an actual rock star in the band OAR. Hey, um, he's also uh, my partner in podcasting as well. But uh, but we looked at, at four campgrounds and made four offers, and um, the the numbers just didn't add up because uh, uh, one a, a few reasons. But one of the main reasons is none of these operators have a line item for their own management, right? It's like it's like well, who who cuts the grass? Who who handles these? You know, who's basically the general manager? It's like oh, I am. Show me where your salary is. Oh, well, it's not, I don't have a salary. I just get the profits. Okay. Well, that's not profit then. 